Hello everyone, thank you. It's an honor to be here. So, uh, as it's been said, I'm Jakub, but you probably know my supervisor, Quinn Guyen, who's a frequent speaker at Hacking the Box and other venues. Uh, but unfortunately, he couldn't be here with me today due to some work duties that he had to attend. So in this talk, we will cover SQL injection and a variant called blind SQL injection. Then we'll go into the optimizations method and uh, that, that the state-of-the-art tools currently use and why this is not sufficient for language used in databases. We'll introduce a new framework called Hakuin and then we'll do some performance comparison and in the end we will conclude the work. So consider a web application that implements a simple search functionality. It takes a user input, for instance ID, and inserts it into an SQL statement that it then executes on a database management system. The system retrieves the desired data, and in the end, the web application forwards the results back to the user. Now, problems may arise when the user input is directly inserted into the SQL query. In such case, an attacker can launch an SQL injection attack and inject a payload that once inserted into the SQL query, it alters its statement. So that's the second example. Here the attacker injects or one equals one payload, uh, which will make the query uh, resolve to logical true unconditionally, and therefore the database management system retrieves more data than intended, and again the web application uh, sends the data back to the attacker. Now, extracting databases is pretty straightforward when the web application exposes the query results, such as in this case. It's, if that's not the case, you can still try to force some errors uh, from the database management systems and then read the data of the error messages. Alternatively, you can try to establish an out-of-band channel from the database management system to your server and exfiltrate the data through the channel. If all of these options fail, you st still can deduce, infer the content. And this is done via blind SQL injection. So the situation is exactly the same as in the previous example. The attacker can inject a payload, but this time the web application does not directly expose the query results. However, depending on the result of the query, whether it resolves to true or false, it will either respond with a 200 success code or 404 not found. Uh, okay, so this essentially allows the attacker to ask the database management system yes or no questions and infer the response based on the response code. Uh, well, this could theoretically lead to a whole database dump. However, this approach is very slow and generates a lot of suspicious traffic. This is because you only get one bit of information for every round trip, for every request that you send at the VAMP application. Okay, so, so how do you extract data when you can only ask yes or no questions? Well, the most straightforward approach is to do exhaustive search so suppose you want to extract a single string. So you ask, is the first character letter A? Is it B? Is it C? And so forth. Uh, unfortunately, the complex complexity is linear. So this, again, is not very efficient. For this reason, the state-of-the-art tools utilize uh, binary search. So instead of asking uh, for letters one by one, you have a whole search range that you split in two halves, and then you send a query to infer to which, which of those halves the correct character belongs to. And you repeat the process until you narrow down the, the search range to a single character, the correct one. There are two other optimizations to mention. One is character set narrowing. So for instance, if you're trying to exfiltrate uh, credit cards, it only makes sense to query digits instead of the whole ASCII range. And the second optimization is string guessing. So in some cases, it is uh, worthy to 
uh, to try to guess the whole string rather than extracting it character by character. So for instance, you can try some common table names such as uses. Uh, the state-of-the-art tools usually come with many features. Uh, they implement all the techniques that I mentioned before, so extracting the databases from the web application responses or the error codes or the out-of-band band channels. But when it comes to blind SQL injections, uh, the tool, tools rely on binary search. And as we'll see in a moment, that is not as efficient as it could be. Our observation is that there is a lot of text written in a natural language in databases. You have the table names, you have the column names, and then you have the actual data, which is mostly textual. In natural languages, the letters occur at different frequencies. So, for instance, in English, the letter A is way more common than the letter X. The second thing is that the context matters. So if you already extracted hello world, then what could possibly be the next character? Binary search does not reflect this. It treats all the letters the same. It assigns them the same priority. So it is not very suitable for this text. Now enter the world of Hakuin. It is a new framework for optimizing blind SQL injection. So it is not trying to find new vulnerabilities. It's not trying to come up with new ways to attack the application. It is speeding up the process of exfiltration. It uses probabilistic language models and statistics. Now we use two approaches separately. One for database schemas, that is the tables, table names and column names and one for the actual content, which are the rows of the different columns. Uh, why we use two separate approaches will be apparent in a moment. As a side note, the framework is named after a Zen teacher and a painter, well, called Hakuin, and this is one of his paintings. It shows two blind men trying to cross a bridge. Uh, okay, so suppose you already exfiltrated letters H, E, L, L, hell. You feed this to a language model. Oh, sorry, I uh, should have mentioned. Uh, this is the approach for the database schemas. So you uh, already have the context hell. You feed it to the language model and it spits out a likelihood distribution. You'll get probabilities for the following characters. So we can see that the O is likely to follow or maybe E and then the rest of the characters. We take all of these probabilities and use them to construct a Huffman tree. Huffman tree is a binary tree where the, where the path to the most frequently occurring characters is the shortest. So we can see that the letter O, the most probable, is, is almost at the top, and so forth. We then search the tree to infer the correct character. Searching a Huffman tree is um, pretty much the same as, as you do with binary search, but instead of splitting the search range into two halves and asking does it belong to the lower half or the upper, ha upper half, here you uh, split, split the range to the left subtree and the right subtree and uh, infer to which subtree uh, the correct character belongs. Once you extract the character, you repeat the process and update the context and repeat the process until the whole uh, string is extracted. <sighs> now, how did we get the language model in the first place? We downloaded terabytes of uh, stack exchange questions, namely stack overflow questions and database administrators, I guess. Uh, we filtered out questions that are related to SQL, then we extracted the code, tried to parse it as separate SQL statements, and then we took out the tables and columns. Uh, then we used these two data sets to train two separate models, uh, five grams. Those are n grams of cardinality of five. Uh, 
Okay, so the last thing to uh, to speak about over here is uh, detecting where the string ends. Now, the state of the art tools uh, com use numeric binary search to infer the length of a, of a string prior to extracting the string itself. Now, this again is quite slow. So we have a neat trick over here where we treat the end of string as a special symbol that is conceptually the same as any other character. So again, the language model doesn't only spit out uh, probabilities for the for the mm, mm, typical characters, it also spits out a probability for the special end of string symbol. Uh, this way we can detect the end of string at almost uh, no cost. Uh, I said that conceptually we can treat the, the special symbols, symbol as any other character, but then you still have to translate it into an SQL statement. And the statement is over here. So we can see there are some nuances. You have to use a logical operator to do an extra check. Uh, this is the approach for extracting database content. It is a bit more complicated, but we'll go into the different parts. So there are two main parts. Uh, one is string guessing. It starts with step one and ends with possibly step three. And the second, second part is per character extraction. And that is the loop that starts with number four and ends with six is this one. So I'll first describe the per character extraction and then I'll go back to uh, guessing. So we have several problems when it comes to database content. Uh, the first one is that the data is not available in advance. So you can't pre-train a model the same way we did with database schemas. You can say that the schemas, the table names, the column names are more or less the same or at least a bit transferable across applications. But when it comes to actual data, it is mostly application specific. Uh, to address the issue, what we do is that we, we train the models throughout the inference process. So as we are extracting characters, we feed them back to the models and train them as we go. You can see that at step six. The second problem is that we are dealing with different types of data and different models work well on different types. So for instance, we have a unigram model that learns character frequencies without context. This is helpful when you're dealing with data where there are no patterns, such as password hashes. We also have five gram as, as previously, uh, that learns the patterns, which is a generic model for uh, for data with patterns. And then we have binary search, search which serves as a fallback in case the first, uh, first uh, two models have not been trained enough to, to outperform binary search. So since we have several strategies, several models we are simultaneously using, we have to always choose the best performing one, the one that is most fitting for the data that we are currently dealing with. Uh, so, so we need to keep statistical information about the performance. So every time we extract a character, we compute how long it would take uh, to extract the character, how many requests it will require using the different strategies. Now this is done at no additional cost because we're doing it only after we extracted the character, so we already have a reference. So instead of injecting queries and inferring the, the correct answer, we can substitute it with a simple comparison to the reference. Okay, now guessing. So our observation is that some strings occur multiple times. So it makes sense to try to guess them right away rather than extracting them one by one. The approach is quite similar. We keep track of all previously extracted 
characters, uh, sorry, uh, strings, and then we use those to construct a Huffman tree in the same way we, we did it with schema, but this time, instead of doing it on a character level, we do it on a string level. And then we search the, search the Huffman tree and, and in case, in case we'll, uh, make a hit, we'll find the string, then we just train the models and proceed to, uh, with the next string. Now there is a bit of a problem. You, uh, if you add, it doesn't make sense to include all the string in the in strings in the Huffman tree because the more strings you include in the tree, uh, well, yes, it does increase the chances that the search will be successful, but at the same time, you'll increase the size of the the tree, and therefore, the search cost is higher. So there's a bit of cost benefit trade-off over here. Uh, so how do we address it? So first, we only select strings that have a high potential of succeeding. How we do this is easy to understand, but difficult to explain, so I'll just have to refer you to a paper that we wrote. Uh, so just assume you already have a set of strings that is mm, that are probably going to succeed. So the next step is to decide whether guessing is going to bring any performance over just trying to do it on a per character basis. So to decide, you need two values. You need to compute the expectation of how many requests it would require to, to extract the, the next string using the on, only uh, per character inference. That means skipping the guessing. Uh, and then you need to compute the expectation how, how many requests it would require if guessing took place. So for the first value, that is pretty straightforward. So since you already have uh, several expert traded strings, you just compute the average length and then you have the uh, request per character statistics that you all already obtained as you were inferring <laughs> characters. So you have the expectation, uh, the first expectation. The second expectation is a bit more difficult. There are two options. Either the search will succeed and you're done, or it will fail and you'll have to proceed uh, with the per character extraction. So it's a probability that the search will succeed times the search cost of a tree, which is a fixed formula, uh, plus the probability that you'll fail and uh, times the, the, the search cost of the tree and the, and the cost of the per character inference. Now again, the probability that you will succeed or fail can be computed based on the strings that you already extracted. Okay, so we evaluated our tool within the uh, scientific framework together with uh, SQL map, barbecue SQL, and JSQL injection. Uh, there are three measurements we looked into. One is uh, for database schemas, one is for database content, and the last one is done only for our tool, and that is the, we, we measured the performance of the tool throughout the extraction uh, process. How does it improve over time? Uh, the details of the experiment, again, can be found in the paper, but in general, we set up an application vulnerable to blind SQL injection, and then uh, we counted uh, the number of requests sent to the application. So these are the results for for database schemas. So as you can see, our tool requires roughly two requests to get one character on average. Uh, while the others require 13 to 17 requests. So this is, this is six times faster than the second best performing tool. An interesting thing over here is that the theoretical limit for blind SQL, uh, sorry, for binary search, which other tools rely on, is seven requests per character. Yet the tools exceeded uh, by a substantial margin. Uh, these are the results on 
database content. So there are several things to see over here. The first one is that the uh, performance of our tool depends on the data it is dealing with. So uh, generally there are three categories we are dealing with. Uh, one, the first one are columns uh, that have only few values. So for instance, users, sex, or, or products category. So this is where the string opportunistic string guessing kicks in and we can extract several, uh, several characters with fewer, fewer than one request. Uh, then we have some general data where you have, uh, where you have lots of patterns, for instance, uh, users addresses, uh, where we achieve two requests per character, uh, performance. This is because the tool was able to learn all the different countries and, uh, since they reoccur, it can save a lot of requests over there. And the last category are some password hashes over here. Uh, here the Unigram model kicked in because it was the, the, the most fitting one, uh, as it doesn't take the context uh, into account. The second thing to notice over here is that we outperform all the other tools on all the columns that we tested by substantial margins. So we can say that, that on columns that, uh, that have only few values, we can be up to 26 times faster. And on the general columns where, uh, where there's nothing special, we can be up to three times two, uh, 3.2 times faster. Uh, okay, lastly, this is a plot of the performance uh, done throughout the inference process. And there are two things to notice over here. One is that uh, all the graphs representing different columns are way below the seven requests per character. That is the theoretical minimum of uh, binary search. So we outperform binary search on all columns substantially. And the second thing is that that there is a slight downwards trend. So the, this means that the more data you're able to extract, the faster the tool will be. That is because the mo models make more accurate predictions. Uh, therefore, you're able to construct uh, better Huffman trees and then searching a better Huffman tree is much faster. Okay, so I have some demos I would like to show. So this is only a simple web application. Uh, we will only need this endpoint. It's, it's very simple. It only takes one parameter, name, and then it inserts this parameter into a query, of course, without sanitization. And depending on the query result, it will either respond with 200 or 404 not, not found. OK. So here is the application. So if you look, if I search for my name, I am not in the database, so we get 404. But I can try to inject an SQL payload, and as we can see, it resulted in 200 OK. OK. So let's see the first demo. Uh, so this is how, how the exfiltration code looks like from, from your perspective uh, when you're using the framework. You implement a requester object, then a database management object, and, and then you have an exfiltrator object. So, so the requester you have to implement yourself, the uh, the database management object is pre-implemented, and then the exfiltrator contains the logic that I just explained in the slides. Uh, so the requester has to do two things. Uh, first one is that it has to inject the the query. So the query is already constructed for you, but you still have to insert it into the vulnerable parameter. The second thing is that it needs to infer whether whether 
the query resolved to true or false. So, so in this case, we can do a simple comparison with the response code. Uh, okay, so we try to exfiltrate the schema uh, over here. And then the second thing we'll do is that we'll try to exfiltrate the uh, data of, of a column that I randomly chose user's address. So let's try. So this is for the schema. This is the result. We have four tables and several columns. And now let's see for the content. So we can see that the application is going wild with the requests sent to it. And we are slowly extracting uh, the addresses. Now we don't have time to go through it, but you get the idea. The second thing I would like to show you is the same process, but this time we are going to stop uh, at every step, every time we extract a character to get a better intuition in what is actually going on inside the framework. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, the code is almost identical to the, the previous one. You have a requester, you have a database management system, and then you have, then you have the exfiltrator object. But this time we said hooks. You will never need to do this. This is just for the sake of the demo. So in, in the hooks function, I will stop uh, throughout after, after every character and I will print out some debugging information. And also I will print, print the Huffman tree. Okay. So let's take a look. So we'll be extracting a concrete string. It's addresses. So let's see. I already printed out the, the, the reference so, so it's easier to understand. But this is not what the tool, tool sees. So the tool doesn't have any context at this moment. Maybe, maybe let me go back here. So we have no context over here. And uh, then we feed, feed the empty string to an, to a language model and it spits out this probabilistic distribution. Then we construct a Huffman tree based on the, the distribution. And, and as we can see, the path to the most frequently occurring <laughs> letters on the first position, uh, are, have the shortest paths. So to get to P, it only takes one, two, three requests. Uh, Okay, no, not so, not so good so far. So let's see. So we already extracted letter A. So here we have A. Now the language model, model spits out different probabilities because it takes the context into account. And we can see that, that, uh, the probabilities are different. So D is one of the most probable, but still it takes one, two, three requests to get to it. So now the context is AD, and then it already knows the next character is most likely to be D. So it only takes one request now. We proceed, again, one request to letter R, and so forth. Now we are at addresses. Oh, not yet, not yet. Addresses, oh, sorry, we are at address. Now, the prediction is that, that, uh, this is the end. We're done. Uh, but also we could proceed with a plural. So in this case, it will require two requests because we have the plural, plural form. And E, S, and that's it. So, so the point here is that because we take the context into account and the probabilities, we don't have to search the whole, the whole tree the same way as we do with, uh, with binary search. We, we can, we can ask, uh, we can prioritize the most likely to succeed characters. Uh, okay. One more thing to mention. So I already mentioned that we wrote a paper. So 
those of you who are interested in the details of the work, uh, you, can, you can look this paper up. So where to go from over here? Uh, uh, currently, we only support SQLite, but we want to pre-implement the queries for, for different database management systems. We also want to address non-textual data. Uh, the, many of the techniques can be used for, for, say, integers. You can use the statistical information and so forth. And then for, for now, it's only a single threaded application, so we want to do parallelism. And once we're done with this, we can either integrate this tool into SQL Map, which is the industry standard, so it will be easy to use, or we want to build an alternative tool uh, on top of the framework. So we are open sourcing the code. You can go and check it out. But we are also op open sourcing the language models and all the, all the data sets that we extracted from the questions. So this may, may come handy as security lists. To conclude, uh, blind SQL injection is slow, but it can be optimized and language aware and statistics aware optimizations matter. And that is it from me. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Do we have any questions? Oh, yeah. Let me come around. Cheers for the talk, Nate. That was really interesting. Um, see earlier when you were looking at the benchmarks, why is it that the determining the, I think it was the, the sex field, why did that take so long for like SQL map and the other tools when your tool was so fast? Uh, come again? Wh which benchmark? Uh, the one where you were comparing to the S. Uh, just a moment. Okay. okay. Uh, if you go back, I think it was. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, this one. Where you, well, the, the other tools take longer to deter, to determine the sex field, whereas yours is so quick. In terms of the number of requests. Okay, come, come ah, no, I'll get I'll get you after. Oh, oh yes, yeah, so sorry, I didn't get it. <laughs> I don't know. Are there any more questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you.